Ireland was established in 1921 and was part of a solution to end years of conflict between Unionists, who wanted Ireland to be part of the United Kingdom, and Nationalists, who wanted Ireland to be an independent country. For many years, Northern Ireland was relatively peaceful and stable as a part of the United Kingdom. But tensions between Unionists and Nationalists over civil rights and Northern Ireland's status as a part of the United Kingdom never went away. In the late 1960s, this tension was turning to violence, with people rioting in the streets. The UK government sent troops to Northern Ireland to help restore order. At first, they were welcomed, but this goodwill did not last. Many nationalists saw the troops' presence as a form of repression. A period known as the Troubles had begun. It was a difficult time to live in Northern Ireland. Communities were divided and people lived in fear of violence and terrorism. At times, this violence spilled over across the island of Ireland, the UK and into Europe. Bombs and assassinations were very real threats. The Irish Republican Army, or IRA, fought violently for Northern Ireland to become part of a united Ireland. The IRA attacked troops, police and unionist communities. Loyalists such as the Ulster Volunteer Force also fought violently over Northern Ireland's position as they wished it to remain part of the UK. They violently attacked the IRA and members of the nationalist community. Both sides targeted businesses and also inflicted violence on their own communities. The conflict lasted for 30 years and came at a terrible cost. Approximately 3,500 people were killed and many more injured were forced to leave. The majority were ordinary civilians. With Northern Ireland's population numbering just one and a half million, this had a terrible impact on everyone's lives, communities and the economy. In 1985, the governments of the United Kingdom and Ireland held talks with each other. This led to the peace talks in the 1990s between the Nationalists and the Unionists. These negotiations became known as the peace process. Many individuals and different groups such as the Women's Coalition and religious organisations played a role. Some worked for over 10 years and they faced many challenges along the way. Secret contacts were made within the groups on both sides. This took a lot of courage as many of the leaders who got involved were accused of betraying the people who followed them. The nationalist movement had significant support during the Troubles from Irish communities living in America. The commitment of the US President Bill Clinton to the peace process also carried a lot of influence. At the time, both Ireland and the United Kingdom belonged to the European Union. This meant that they were already a part of a larger union, which made the idea of cooperation between the two easier. A key moment in the peace process came with the signing of the Belfast Agreement on April 10th, 1998. It was signed on the Friday before Easter, so it is often called the Good Friday Agreement. The Belfast, or Good Friday Agreement, was formed of two parts. A deal signed by the UK Prime Minister, Tony Blair, and the Taoiseach, Ireland's leader, Bertie Ahern. And a deal that was also signed by parties and civil society groups in Northern Ireland. It said that elections would be held for a new assembly to represent both nationalist and unionist communities, with an agreement to share power in the governing of Northern Ireland. As part of the agreement, the United Kingdom and Ireland both changed their laws. These changes made it clear that Northern Ireland would remain part of the UK unless a majority of its people voted for it to leave and become part of Ireland. The agreement established new institutions to support cooperation between Ireland and Northern Ireland and between the governments of the UK and Ireland. The agreement also created powerful new protections for the rights of the people of Northern Ireland. 
and addressed difficult issues about how the police force was organised, the release of prisoners who had committed violent acts for political aims, and the giving up of weapons. A simple piece of paper would never have been enough to end the conflict without the involvement and consent of political groups and the public. Two votes were held at the same time, on the 22nd of May 1998, in both Northern Ireland and Ireland, over whether there was support for the agreement. This was known as the referendum. The result in Northern Ireland was a clear majority, with over 70% in favour. The result in Ireland produced an even larger majority of over 90% in favour. The agreement was a huge achievement. It formed the basis on which the IRA, UVF and other groups began to turn away from violence. This was a long and difficult journey and was not completed overnight. In the years which followed, political parties accepted the need to work together on important issues such as education, health and the economy with the agreement setting out a vision for a more integrated, reconciled and shared society. There remain disagreements, but both sides recognise the need to ensure there is no return to violence. It is this rejection of violence and the determination to move forward peacefully that is the greatest achievement of the Belfast or Good Friday Agreement. <laughs>